Hello everyone and welcome back, though maybe you should be saying welcome back to me because this is my first battle since February. It's been seven months I've been busy with the tournament, as I'm sure you are all aware. What a great tournament that was, wasn't it? And speaking of the tournament, with me today, this is a 3v3, is the winner of the tournament. That's Indie Pride. He's over here in the blue. And way over here on the other side, also from the tournament, is Madness969. So we got together and did a little 3v3 together. This is the replay of that. I didn't really watch what they were doing in this battle. I was way too focused on what I was doing. So I'm just going to focus on my battle here right in the middle. Obviously, the most important being in the middle. I kid, of course. Uh, what I'm bringing to this battle is pretty similar to what I used to bring, but a little bit different. A two bow samurai up in front. Got to have those two bows. Um, three Yari Samurai this time, all fresh, and then six Light Cavalry, all fresh as well, hiding here in the trees. Of course, you're right in the middle. I guess I should mention these guys, the Katana Corps, six Katana Samurai, all ready to go after months of sitting alone at home, watching while other men go to war and get glory. But they're back on the battlefield. Very nice to join us today. We have three subscribers on the other side. Over here, Fighting Madness, on the east side, is Lagman. He's here in the white. In the middle here, fighting me in red, is Roberto. And over here on the left is Falcon22, fighting Indie Pride. <clears throat> so speaking of Indie Pride and Madness, uh, they actually met during the tournament and became friends and started their own Total War channel. It's called Milk and Cookies Total War. It's actually a really great channel. Uh, you should definitely check it out. I'll be putting links in the video and in the description. And of course, I linked it on my channel page as well. They do a very good job of commentating, uh, so you should definitely check them out. Uh, if you're into watching Total War commentaries, which if you weren't, why would you be here? Um, anyway, you can also see a live commentary of this battle. Uh, Madness recorded it live with our uh, thoughts as they're going in the moment. It was extremely laggy having people from America and Europe and being a 3v3, but it was a lot of fun. So anyway, let's get this started. So like I said, got the classic Katana core going here. Let's take a look at what my enemy is bringing, Roberto, here in the middle. He's got a nice little Nodachi and Katana front line here, backed up with nuns, monks, and attendants in the rear. Up front, we got a Bow Monk and a Matchlock Samurai, both fairly experienced. This Bow Monk is a rank 9 Bow Monk, very scary and dangerous. Matchlock Samurai there is rank 4. The Katana is one of them is fresh here, but this one, ouch, rank 8, can be very hard to deal with. This Warrior Monk right here is also rank 6, so when I'm looking at my opponent, what are going to be the pain points here? <clears throat> Thankfully for me, it doesn't have too much cavalry. It's got two Yari cavalry, and that's sort of one of my weaknesses. Uh, for two reasons. Number one, having the Yari Samurai support means you simply have less numbers than if you use Yari Ashigaru, so it can be harder to deal with a cavalry that way. But also because the light cavalry here, um, I don't always suggest bringing only light cavalry. Uh, I did in this one because I'm very confident in my spear use, uh, because if the enemy brings their cavalry and you get a cav battle going far from the infantry lines where your own spears can't support them, they're just going to get torn apart. I mean, even if it's like 2 versus 6, you'll still most likely lose. Uh, so that's one thing good about Yari Samurai, though. They have that advance rapidly, which can help them to close that difference in distance. And you can actually set traps really well for the enemy cavalry. So uh, light cavalry only it has its good and bad uses. Um, what they're really good at is being a sacrifice, which works very well with the Katana core because Katana Corps, being the sort of kings of melee fight, don't really need the support, at least not nearly as much as other units, so you can win without the cavalry, freeing up your cavalry to be sacrifices and just sort of distract the enemy even. <coughs> that can totally be huge. So we're going here towards the middle. Uh, my battle had a bit of skirmishing, um, and speaking of skirmishing, I brought my bows out here in front, and the Naginata Warrior Monk Cavalry from Falcon came over here to support his friend in the middle. Uh, luckily I did manage to catch it quick enough, and seeing that, I moved all of my spears over to this right side which ended up leaving me a little vulnerable later, uh, but at the time I thought it was a good way to just scare off any enemy cavalry from hurting my skirmishers, because uh, as long as Roberto was keeping his back there, I wasn't going to be worried too much about him uh, pushing out. So, my bow samurai, who are they going to be attacking? Obviously, I'm going for these bow monks. Rank 9 bow monks can do a lot of damage very quickly. So I figure if I can distract them with my bow monks and just wear them down, that'll be good enough for me. They'll have done their job and taken out the enemy missile units. That's really all I can ask of them. Uh, as I don't really depend on bow units at all. They're mostly just distractions and sacrifices for me, which is why I like the bow samurai, because their higher armor and defense and morale means they're going to stand a fight in melee actually quite well, especially for a, melee or a ranged unit, which you'll actually see later in the battle. <coughs> so the fire attack's going right away. I only brought one up immediately to shoot at the bows. The other I just kind of had in reserve a little bit. 
but seeing that he was going to sit back and skirmish, I decided to bring the second one up right away and get the skirmishing. Now, I'm not going to actually shoot at the matchlock with my bows. Uh, simply the fact, matchlocks aren't as scary as they used to be, so I don't put that much priority on them anymore. Um, also because they have higher armor being matchlock samurai, and the bow monks are a lot squishier, and have less numbers, and are overall more deadly, to be honest. Uh, so I decided to focus all my ranged fire on them for that reason, and also because, hey, I have sacrificial light cavalry. They can definitely take out the matchlocks just as well, if not better, than my bow samurai. So here comes the light cavalry, just be a complete sacrifice, throwing them straight up the middle, right into the matchlocks, and there they go. <coughs> what this is also going to do is simply force the enemy to react. If you're making the first moves here that force your enemy to react to you, you have control of the battle, and it's much easier to take control and win by your own merits when you're the one calling the shots. And throwing a light cavalry right up his gullet like this is a great way to get control of the battle. And he's actually going to stand and fight pretty well. I mean, he's, there he goes, finally breaking, but actually lasted quite a uh, long time. My general, of course, being grouped with my infantry units, uh, often ends up running in front of them if I am distracted elsewhere. So I managed to pull him back just in time and get him uh, behind the infantry lines. Sorry about that. But anyway, I wasn't going to attack this early. I kind of wanted to push the skirmishing a little more, especially because my light cavalry did a pretty good job of damage here. 68 men left in the matchlock samurai, 44 in the bow monk. So I wanted to skirmish a little bit more, and mostly because once the battle starts, I don't really worry too much about my bows. So I wanted to do their damage early, but seeing as I had a pretty good opportunity to attack here, I decided to just press my attack and go for it right now. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm bringing up all my forces here. Unfortunately, I forgot a little bit about my Yari Samurai, which is going to be a bit of a problem in a minute, uh, when he's going to notice that I have no real anti-cavalry support and going to run his cavalry, uh, his Yari cavalry here, into my swords. But fortunately, they're not going to get a good charge off, having no real time to build up momentum. So only going to kill about eight people in this initial charge. And then he's actually going to pull back, seeing that he doesn't really have much of a charge there, and being Yari cavalry, they will probably lose this Katana Samurai. The Yari Samurai now that I realize that, oh yeah, I have to deal with cavalry here, are going to be moving up to the front and uh, be prepared for any cavalry attacks that will be coming. He has two units of cavalry, only one of which that I see at the moment. But one light cavalry is going to come over here. I was actually very worried here. A rank 8 Yari cavalry is just going to run roughshod over this light cavalry. I mean, you have five units of them, it'll probably still win, to be honest. They just can't stand a fight in melee. Got a great charge, though, so I sent him right in to uh, just to be a distraction and pin down this Yari cavalry. He lost 13 men in that charge, so they still got a respectable charge. Don't underestimate light cavalry in that circumstance, but certainly don't overestimate their melee abilities. So here I go with my cavalry attack now, waiting as long as I can until he sort of set himself up, and that's when I'm going to set my cavalry. And one distraction is going to come in right here. Uh, second Yari cavalry is going to come in there, or light cavalry is going to hit his Yari cavalry there. Now let's take a look at how the infantry advance is coming up now. His matchlocks have started firing, but they're kind of behind his own men, so he won't get a very good shot off. Now I have four katanas in the front and two in the back on reserve. The Yari Samurai is starting to uh, change their uh, formation here. One is going over to the cavalry unit just to help pin him down and get him off the field. because He's going to tear right through this light cavalry in no time. The other two are still on this flank here because I am anticipating another cavalry unit to come and attack me. But he actually moved over here to fight any pride. So that ended up being a little overly cautious on my part, expecting the cavalry to be there when he actually wasn't. Uh, so they're actually going to end up being in anti-infantry duty, which is always fun to do. So after all those distractions there, uh, I have two light cavalry essentially left. One's going to go right into the middle here and just try and distract the enemy and just tear him up, uh, get him to get a little disorganized, as we can see there. Uh, nice charge. Actually, this Naginata attendant is actually already wavering at 63 men from that little charge from the light cavalry. So a nice amount of damage there going into the warrior nuns as well. Lightly armored troop. Not going to take that charge very well. You can see these guys getting plowed over right there. This one's going to be the money shot, though. Coming in with my light cavalry right in the rear to try and get to his general, but he's going to react here with a Naginata attendant and manage to stop the charge. And if they stop the light cavalry charge, you're pretty much done there. So I pull him out as soon as I can just to get him out of there for future charges. Now the Yari cavalry is routed. The light cavalry is freed up. My general is going to be going around now to try and get some charges. That he's Him and that light cavalry are all I really have left on cavalry. The Yari samurai coming around. One joins the katanas up in the melee fight. Uh, notice here I still have my katanas here in reserve, being very, very patient with them. I'm in a very v advantageous situation. I have them surrounded with my infantry units. As you can see, I've, I mean, I've pretty much enveloped them completely. So I'm in a very advantageous position. I don't need the cavalry charges at this point, so I'm saving my katanas and just waiting for a good opportunity to come into attack. There are the warrior nuns here that I could be attacking, 
uh, but I'm waiting for a hole to open there for them. <coughs> the Yari Samurai over here are waiting to get the position. Now, watch what I do with the Yari Samurai here in a second. Is there anything else I need to talk about right here? Don't think so. Let's go. One's coming over here to help envelop and just be a shock, being fighting in the rear. The other one, other light cavalry that fought the Yari cavalry is coming over, and my general's flanking on the other side, so I'm getting a pincer on both sides of my cavalry. Now watch what I'm doing with the Yari samurai, spreading them out really, really long and thin. Now why would you do that? Because I'm not counting on them to do any fighting, I just want them to tank and suck as many units as they can into this little funnel uh, and keep them occupied so my general has a clear line of attack into his middle. Now it didn't quite work out that way for me as this katana samurai was right here in my way. I was going to try and go for the general. Uh, but I try and hit the Katana Sam right here, but don't get off a good charge. They had no momentum, and Banzai came a little late. So I just had to pull my General out there, not doing any damage. Yari Samurai is coming right in the thick of things, going straight for the General, and just causing havoc. As we can see, we've got some wavering going on here. The Naginata attendants have 58 men in wavering. They have very low morale. Uh, Katana Samurai right here in the middle have finally found their hole. Where are the Warrior Nuns at? Are they still here, or do they kind of... I wonder where they went. Maybe they routed. Not likely, as they're very, actually very, very strong units with very good morale. But anyway, a hole opened up here, so my katanas are going right through it, straight for the heart of the enemy army. He's bunched up. It is a very bad position for you to be in, all bunched up against the katana corps. We're going to see the mass wavering there, and my general's going to come in for a big charge here and hitting the avatar bodyguard. Naginata attendants not going to stop that one. My general goes right into his, and we have a big melee going down there. Killed four men, not too bad. And his front line is completely collapsing as I got that big surround on. Didn't even need to use all six units. The fifth one uh, that was sitting there in back didn't even end up really fighting. And then we see the mass routed. He's pretty much surrounded and routed there. And there goes my mass route. Wonderful. Not too bad for not having played in seven months. Shaking that rust off. General's all that's left and he's wavering. Indy Pride of Madness have long since won their fight. It'll be very interesting to see how that went in their live commentary that they have up. I think they have it posted right now. There goes the general. Only one unit left for our enemy, really, on this one. This was kind of fun. He's got this hero cavalry unit going for my bows. Didn't route this one. 28 men didn't route. Love it. That's why I love bow samurai. They make such good distractions. If you can have your enemy cavalry focusing on your bow samurai, you're doing pretty good. It's much better than going into your infantry line, especially if you've got that katana core. General comes in to support them, but there's just... Not much left for our enemy. Big charge there. Killed about 12 men for my general. I was pretty happy with that charge. Can't complain too much. There he is right there. What a boss. Just this unit left to clean up. Standing and fighting very heroically. Shaking at eight men. The bow cavalry are fighting them as well. Or bow, sa bow samurai, excuse me. Oh, dang. That dude he just threw a spear into him. That was crazy. This hero has probably some pretty cool attack animations. Anyway, that's about it for that battle. Thanks for watching, everybody. Be sure to check out Milk and Cookies Total War. It's a great channel, doing some really great commentary. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you in the next one.